Hello YouTube! Here we are with a build video for you guys. Here is the part. Here we have the TBS Crossfire Nano. Team Black Sheep, of course. And then we have the DGI FPV Air Unit. Here we have the Armiton, world's only lifetime warranty frame. DGI Marmot Edition, Marmot DGI Edition. Now here we have some, some simple braided cable. Now here we have the GoPro 8 mount from Phaser. Yeah, I don't mind it. Look, it's not too bad. Very shiny. And then we have the other parts. Motor protectors or arm protectors. Uh, SMA connector. And here is the front bumper. Goes under and protects your, helps protect the bottom of your camera. And here's the stars. Some T-motor paces and here we have the T-motor flight stack F4 with a 55 amp Pro 2 ESC. It's a really good stack. I've already used it. Very nice stack. And here we have the packaged Armiton frame and now it's unpackaged. There's the nice file it comes with and here's the very good carbon and there's the new serial number feature make it a lot easier for claiming the frame warranty hell yeah I'll put this down here put this over here All right. here we have the DGI air unit here's some paperwork nothing else put that up there All right, what's in the paperwork All right, some instructions yeah keep them put them up there all right there's the air unit itself let's get it out it's nicely packaged very tight it's not going anywhere without you taking it out come on camera out you come well here we have the air unit it looks really good and solid and there's the connection and the antenna ports and here we have the camera with the nice two screws. Oh, that's a nice lens. It's also replaceable by Runcam for future reference. But yes, it's a nice air unit. Uh, yep, better get these antennas out. These are a prick. Yeah. Oh no, here yeah, we'll get this out first. Here's the cable. Out you come, cable. Do not damage your cable. You need it. Yep, goes in one way. Plug straight in. Nice solid connection. That ain't going nowhere. And a nice long cable. Looks to be about seven, eight inches. Yeah, plenty of room. All right, let's get these damn antennas out. There's that one. RPSMA uh, MMA, MMCX and then you got the other one it's a little prick to get out uh, here, here's the anti-water caps and then yeah, out comes the other antenna alright Make sure to read your instructions as there was differences to this Marmot DGI edition compared to the standard Marmot. And also lay your, everything out and make sure you have enough room in your stack for everything. As you can see I was having a look here and I was like hey this is different. Yeah, there's two standoffs here that weren't in the original Marmot to help support the middle. Yep, yeah, I like it. And it helps hold the DGI unit in place. 
and here is the air unit foam another very handy thing so you don't need to strap it down or anything it's very good foam all right I like to empty out all my screws and nuts and bolts onto a plate so here we go done yep and there's some other parts too those two little circle parts put that over there all right to start off I thought I'd put the first part of the front part together just get a 10 mil screw and then get the aluminium support put that in between and screw on all right now put that up to the side get the marmot bottom plate and get the rear tower standoffs find yourself a screw I believe it was the 8 mil screw about 8 mil long yep. put that in there make sure it yeah, just hold it tight screw it in and then finish it off with the driver Now you get the SMA slash Immortal T holder. Slide that straight in, and that looked nice. Get the other rear tower. Slide that on. Now find another eight mil screw. hand tighten and then finish it off with the driver doesn't take long want it nice and tight now you want to put on the front towers Just slide that in it can be a bit finicky yeah. once you get it in the right position get a 10 mil or yeah, I think it's the 10 mil for this one slide it in and then screw it in and you want that one nice and tight and straight and make sure you get a good set of drivers these are a lifesaver I had crap ones to begin with and yeah they just did not work all right, get your other tower, put it on, get another 10 mil, and then tighten her up. You want it nice and tight and straight. Hmm, that looks nice already. All right, you want to get your middle standoff and another 10 mil slide the 10 mil through and then just screw the standoff on you can actually get these really really tight just with your fingers you don't even need to screw them in they ain't going nowhere right, find another 10 mil running out of them yeah 10 mil there you are Slide that through, get the standoff, and screw that on. Oop. Yeah, screw. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, nice and tight. Ain't going nowhere. Alright, now let's open the T Motor flight stack. Uh, it's in there fairly tight. Oh, it comes out this way. Here we go. That's a nice looking flight controller. Look at all those ports and it's got everything you would want on it. Good job T motor. And rear bottom connections as well. So you can yeah, if you want an ultra clean build you can do it. 
that's awesome all right put that over there all right let's get the rest of this out uh whoops oh, oh i dropped that anyway ah oh, these are on tight come on off you come there all right those screws are too long all right here we go a bunch of gummies and plastic standoffs and race wire and here's the capacitor that seems like a nice cap um, we've got two wires they're both the same one looks shorter but it's not oh and here's the ESC oh that looks nice T-motor ESCs always look great that looks awesome look at this shiny Oop. oh look at that very neat very tidy and sturdy looking oh, put that there be careful and then the cap can go there and then we got the box it's a nice box you can store your parts in it put that aside all right here we have the the DJI foam no it doesn't go there ah that's where it goes nice now peel the bottom sticker off and then slaughter on it's a bit finicky but you can manage to line it up perfect like so yep, make sure it's all flat stuck down properly yep. now please install your immortal T and stack standoffs that come with your quad All right, and now we are going to attach the capacitor to the flight controller I like to do it so well, with this particular one it came straight through I just tinned it, pre-tinned it in place with the, because it was through the hole. So when I was pre-tinning, I could attach the capacitor. So, and just pre-tin the next one. Make sure it's all absorbed in. Spread that solder around. And you want that whole pad covered. make sure that top one's covered completely there we go and make sure that one's spread out properly as well yeah now that's all done all right now you want to cut the ends off any bits sticking out I like to put mine in a position where it's most comfortable for me and then tin this side for the actual battery wire put a nice big blob on there spread it all around and then do the same thing on the other side I didn't have any blue tack so I was stuck using these right, now set that over to the side get your battery wires out and then tin them even though these came with a little bit of tin on them I prefer to do it, put a bit of extra of my solder on them just yeah habit yeah, nice pre-tin nice coat of new fresh solder that's what you want you want it all clean and nice all right, now to do the same thing on the negative wire feed in a nice fresh blob spread it all around make sure you got enough on there you want it all the wire covered there we go nice nice and freshly coated find a spot where it's easy to comfortable for you to solder 
remember keep your end of your soldering iron clean and always use fresh solder put a nice bit on the end make sure it's really hot and then melt the two together and done just clean up that tip up oh, got a little blob there I don't like that little blob I want to get rid of it and smoothen that out there we go done that looks nice move that cap out of the road for a second examine it yep that looks all nice and well soldered right now for the negative wire same thing I need a nice bit of fresh solder on the tip nice clean tip uh, come on solder work with me here yeah, get a nice blob of solder on there nice clean tip get it exactly where you want it all right and just heat it up and slowly push it down until it's all one piece with this one I had to push it forward just a little bit after I got it hot because I wanted a really nice connection have a nice look at it make sure to examine it yep nice stable good connection now what you want to do is just put it on your stack on and make sure your wires fit behind because I like to mount mine right behind there and whoop oh, ah, get, yeah my camera decided to fall over make sure those wires will fit behind yeah, just slide it on in and then put your wires in behind the end of your drone I find that to be the safest mounting position for my battery connector yeah it's just very handy now what I might do is have a quick look at these motors we're going to be using these are the T motor paces 2400 kV 2306 uh, here's all the screws nuts and bolts that come with it you get some spare even spare uh, this pair of screws to hold the bell on. Uh, get nice thick wires, very long. Yep, they'll do fine. Yep, a little extra room. Sweet. Alright. Yep, fits really easy. Right, put that aside. Take this off. time to do the crossfire just take these out of the bag and there's the wires yep, put that aside take the wires out oh there's the receiver itself put that up there ready to be worked on now take the wires out of the bag Let's start with the black wire. Just put that through the hole, line it up. Yep, it's all ready to go. Pre clean your tip and then solder. On. I like to just pop it through and then solder straight to the ring. It can be a little hard to get it to connect, but if you've got a nice glob of solder on there, just keep it there for a sec and it will fill in. done all right now for the positive wire yeah, just put it through the hole clean your tip get your solder just do the same thing get it in there nice and neat can be a little harder to stick without pre-tinning the, the wires through but if they're jammed through there's nowhere for them to go and now for the first signal wire if it 
if it won't stay there you're gonna have to hold it while you solder same process just drop a little glob on there and then it holds it in place now I think with this last wire it was being a bit of a butt so I end up running it through the opposite way just to make it a little easier I had to hold it in place and just put a little solder on there and there we go all soldered up yep all done now what you want to do connect your antenna Line it up with how much room you want. First you want to get your pliers and cut a gap in the foam directly through the middle. Try and peel the sides back a little bit, which I'll do off camera in a sec. Peel the sides back a bit with the tape, then get that wire right in there underneath nicely. Now what you want to do is make sure your bind button is accessible through the bottom. Sorry, but I lost some footage, so I'll explain and provide pics. Here is the crossfire receiver. I want it taped like this to the top of the bottom plate. Also, route the wires to the front of the drone. Now, get the DJI Air unit and place it on top of the foam provided. With, Make sure it is plugged in. Also, run the camera to the front of the drone. Now, install the flight controller on top of the crossfire receiver you just taped in place. And also, over the top of the DJI camera cable. During the lost footage, I also did all three of just about all three of the motors i was just finishing this one off see so yeah, i just use a lighter don't need a heat gun <laughs> but yeah you just got to be quick don't keep it on the same spot very long all right so we've got three motors done as you can see all i did was line them up to the connection on the ESC and then put on my cabling over the top of the wires and then heat shrink it. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. Just you want that the same size because the back two are longer than the front two. So you just measure it up, cut it down, then double check the measurement. You want a little bit of overlap so you can put the heat shrink on it. Yep, there's your heat shrink, measure it up, make sure it's the same. You want it to look uniform. The heat shrink can be a bit finicky getting it on but yeah, you just slide it on. I recommend doing the this one first and then the motor connection. It's easier to get the heat shrink over after it's been down. So you wanna slide that over. So that's half, half. And, and yes, it is very finicky. There'll always be little wires, fibers sticking out. Then just melt it down well, the heat shrink as you can sort of see in the reflection <laughs> and then get the other heat shrink wait for it to cool a bit slide it on yeah it's always a bugger to get it on but you'll notice it's a lot easier because you've already done this side see go straight on then just yep line it up with the other one you want it to look about the same stretch them straight Yep, that looks dead on. Lovely. Alright, now just push it over. Make sure you pull that tight. Line it up again. 
and then yeah just heat that heat shrink up and it looks very neat tidy and gives a bit more support to the bottom of the motor too in a crash I reckon having that bit of extra heat shrink yep once that's all lined up and that looked good and that's how you do it you just repeat the process remember the front two arms will be shorter so make sure you measure measure twice cut once all right so now we've got it all ready all right let's get out our motor bolts oh you also get these extra parts do not lose them they are just in case you lose the one off your bell that holds your bell on so make sure you put them aside all right let's get our motor bolts I use three usually Let me just put these up here out of the way oh make sure you get your arm protector slide that on the right way it's also a soft mount this one for the motor and now we're going to screw the motor into the bottom here it's quite simple you just line it up start the screw a little bit and then finish it off with the driver you don't screw it all the way in you want it fairly loose still but tight enough so it, you know it's in but enough so you can still move it so that way you can adjust it to line up the other screw All right, and then you just slide that one in it's not quite lined up just move the bolt a bit uh, move the motor just a tad yeah it can be a bit fiddly but it'll line up and then just screw her in now you can do this one tight because it's being held in by the other one held in place then just do the same thing with this one nice and tight yeah you want you want them tight and then tighten this one up just to make sure all tight nice I'll put that there get this more comfortable move these wires out of the road some flux on the old soldering iron and then tin these pads you want it nice and clean but tinned all over now it's time for the second one same thing tin it up nicely spread it all around nice silver blob now and then we do it again put a little bit more flux on there might as well finish this row off spread that solder around make sure it's clean if it's not give it a little clean now do the next one solder around make sure it's nice clean and then do it again on the last one Bit of 
flux. Put it on the end of the wire too. It helps. I do this on every wire. Oop, now pre tin your wire. for you and just quickly blob these two blobs together and Bob's your uncle it's done all right now to repeat it the process again measure up get the old cutters Measure twice, cut once. Remember. Pull that little bit of plastic off. There we go. Make sure there's enough metal showing. If not, just pull a tiny little bit more off. You don't want too much showing though. Pre-tin after you put the flux on. Nice and clean. Nice blob of solder. Grab the pliers. Needle nose pliers. Make sure they're nice little ones. And then just solder up. It takes two seconds. Done. up the last wire measure twice cut once cut pull the little piece of plastic off the end so you can get at the wire put some flux on there and then tin. Nice little blob of shoulder. Line her up. And then solder her on. Don't you love the smell of solder in the morning? it's all clean neat and tidy push them wires down a bit it's time to work on the next one make sure you slide your motor arm protector on and soft mount if you want them before you put your motor on Here I was just putting on a one of the stack screw stack nuts just so I knew how much wire I wouldn't need because this one I want to do differently instead of running it directly into the side because it's so much closer to the middle I want to run it in through the back so I'm just Gauging it up, measuring it all up. Should always make sure to do that. Also, I screwed that motor in. I showed how to screw the other one in. I'm sure you could figure it out. It's easy enough. All right, now here, you line the wire up exactly how you would want it. Measure twice, cut once. Right. 
or in this case cut twice because the stupid pliers didn't work and then pull that bit of plastic off make sure there's enough there yep that's good all right now pre-tin you should always pre-tin your wires just makes the job so much easier when you want to solder it up and push that into place exactly where you want it line that wire up get your pliers make sure it's comfortable for you if it didn't feel comfortable move it around make it easy for yourself so you don't you don't want to shake my hands always shake but I can usually find a comfortable position where they're pretty stable solder that up make it clean nice stable connection yeah this wire was being a prick it kept moving and I eventually got it now let's get the next wire ready line her up measure twice cut once plastic bit off pre-tin after you put some flux on it that's all neat put a nice little glob of solder on there make sure your soldering iron is clean always clean get your pliers get comfortable line her up flown together, flowed together rather, make sure it's clean, yeah I'm very picky, I like it very clean, <laughs> alright, push the wires out, make it how you want, yeah, like I said I'm very picky, I wanted it completely flow into the join. That's how you want all your joins. All right, now line the next one up. Measure once, cut twice. <laughs> no, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> and then she's cut. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, sometimes they're a prick pull that bit of plastic off so you got some area to tin tin her up ready always keep your solder and tip clean too just makes soldering so much easier line her up and then just flow them together Isn't that, see, you see that shine. That's when you know it's a good join. Yep. Now, I've done the other side. You see, you want it uniform. So you just co copy the other side. Make sure it's all lined up and then plug in your flight controller plug. And then set the flight controller on top of the stack now measure and cut all your wire and pre-tin your pads and wires ready to solder like I just showed you now here we are going to grab the negative wire from the DJI Air unit and solder it to the negative next to the 12 volt pad take your time it is a small wire there we go all nicely done 
Now get the red wire and hook that up to the 12 volt. These are very fine wires, you want to be extra careful. Now done. Now here you want to take the UART RX wire, which is the white, and solder it to the TX pad. Now here you want to get the grey wire, which is the UART TX, and solder it to the RX pad. Examine it and make sure they are not touching at all. My own word, they just looked really close. Now get your crossfire wires. I started with the positive wire. Soldered that to the 5 volt. Then I got the negative wire, hooked that to the negative pad near the 5 volt. These are very fine wires, take your time. I've had a fair bit of practice soldering and always double check and make sure they're not touching. Now get your RX wire or TX wire it depends on how you've got it set up. Pretty sure that is the TX wire going to RX. And then this is the RX wire going to TX. If you're following me along you'll be able to see what pads I'm soldering to and you can easily follow. And then make sure it's all neat and tidy. And that is all the soldering done for the build. Sorry you will have to put the camera cage together, the guard just slides straight on and then you just screw the other side on. And that's what it looks like when it's done. I actually lost the footage, I'm sorry about that. And then here you get the DJI camera. Slide it in and then just put one screw in it. Just so when you put the camera cage on you know exactly how much room and everything you've got. So yeah, I'll just I had a screw ready, I'll just screw that in, doesn't have to be all the way in, I just want it to sit there. Yeah, not too tight. So now I get the camera cage screws, there are six. Line it up so it's comfy and then screw these in one at a time. It's through the front. I like to line it up so I can just see the hole in the bottom of the camera cage. You'll know what I'm talking about. So you just screw that in, just put one screw in lightly. Not all, not quite done up very tight. And then get another screw and then do the same on the other side in the middle. That way you can still adjust it. it takes a while to screw in. There's six screws. I'd done them a little too tight, so I had to undo them so I could adjust it properly. It looks right because I've done a bunch of these marmots. This is my third one. So I just did it by eye. I was wrong. <laughs> I end up having to adjust it 
down the track. But anywho, you get the idea. It goes on how you would like. So just put these other screws in. Now it's the next one. You just put one on either side now, north and south of the other screw. Yeah, you want them tight. You don't want your camera cage moving around while you're flying or in a crash. And the three screws give it the extra support. And remember to check these screws too after a couple of flights or crashes because you'd be surprised one or two might have come loose. This one was slightly out of frame but you get the idea. I'm just screwing in the camera cage. Right here, I'm showing, I actually had to take those standoffs that I put in out. Uh, they are, I didn't have any long enough plastic screws to put in through the top and you don't get any with it from Armiton or that. But what they do give you is these normally. And that's what I prefer to use. So I, I had four laying around, so I put them in there, and it fits perfect. So yeah, I'm just quickly screwing these in. I've actually put the speed up for this. Everyone knows how to put standoffs in. <laughs> oh, that fly is driving me nuts. Go away, fly. Screw, 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 in it goes. Yeah, I think, hoping this is the last one. Sorry about this. <laughs> but yes, you, you want to make sure you've got some good standoffs, and they're not bad. I use those in most builds. And you want your ear seat tight make sure you yes there's no movement at all all right now get your flight controller i've got a wire that i've cut off and he trinked under there the um, s bus wire from the dji control uh, air unit i don't use that because we are using crossfire so yeah just put your flight controller on make sure no wires are being caught have a look Alright, and then put on some, I got these tiny little plastic uh, nuts, so I put them on there, yeah, just push them on, give them a twist, then just put them on. You want to push it down so that the gummy is being slightly squished, so that way you know it's soft mounted properly but it's still tight. And you won't get any vibrations or movement. Yeah, then you want it just right. And the last one, finally. It can be a little hard to get started. Once they start, you can usually finish them off fairly quickly thumbs and screw them on so it's squishing all right we're getting close to done very very close now this part is just putting on the GoPro mount I also slid in the carbon piece it slides into the bottom of the mount and then you just push it on then you want to get your screw, line it up with the hole in the top of the mount, and then you screw it into the cage. I actually didn't get one of these on camera, so I only got three of them going in, but there is four in there. 
Uh, this one I couldn't get through the top, so I had to hold the screw in the uh, GoPro mount and then attach it once it was in there. And then line it up with the hole and then screw it in. Yeah, but it worked. You want it nice and tight so the mount has no movement and your top plates of your cage is secure. Yeah. And I put the final screw in. Just slide that on there once you've got the driver inside. Line it up with the back hole and then screw her in. I love this mount design. It's very handy. I've got two, I run two different types of mounts. This one is a less protective one I got from Phaser, and there's also one I print from Thingiverse. I was thinking about having a giveaway of a couple of one of the mounts. Uh, if you're interested, leave a comment below. Now here, I'm just screwing in the other side of the camera cage as you've seen while I was talking about the giveaway. Now this part, use her on your own. I am putting the camera in. It is a horrible job. You have to get the little plastic washers in beside it and it is so finicky and frustrating that it, yeah, good luck. All right. Now take your air unit off and attach the antennas after you put them through your top plate. Then remove the sticky DJI foam top plastic. Ah, now you just want to line up the screw holes. Can be a bit tight. Grab your screw, screw her in. Usually about an eight mil. Yeah, you want it nice and tight. No give it all first time you do it there will probably be a click noise when it pops into place. Grab another screw, screw her in, whoa we're getting close to done. And just wind her in, see how was, the anticipation was killing me, I wanted to hurry up and get it in there, but yeah you want nice at least an 8 to 10 mil for that. Then it probably a 10 mil for this one or an 8. Screw it in nice and tight all the way down. And it also locks your antennas in place with this unit. It's really handy. I like the design of this. It's their DJI air unit marmot. It's not it's like it's a afterthought. It's, a, it's like they've redesigned it a little bit and just made it better. I'm really happy with the job they've done. Alright now down to the second last screw. Just wind that in. This TPU mount has plenty of give so and now the last screw put that in, screw her up. sure it's tight. You want long screws. Go right the way through and then tight. Now this is how you put props on. See how the pitch... The, yeah, you'll see how this is how you put them on. It's not hard. Just line them up. It's always going in at the front and in at the back. That's the easiest way to remember. Then you put the bolts on. I'm just hand tightening. That'll do for now. You just get the idea. I'll have to take these off when I'm setting the drone up. And that's the build done. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. The build come out a lot better than that. It ever anticipated team motor you outdid yourself this stack is awesome these motors look mint the t 
TPU from Phaser looks really neat. Uh, it, it all come out looking really good, and the frame itself come come out looking awesome. Cheers, Armiton, for keeping it up, bringing out new stuff, and that warranty. I love it. Couldn't be flying without it. Just keep it up. And shout out to my Patreons, and hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Cheers. Mm-hmm.